welcome back to another Parts Factory Australia installation tutorial video. Guys, we're back out on the farm, back working on another scrap car. Guys, we're gonna be changing the clock spring on this beautiful 2009 to 2015 Hyundai i20. Now, I know that this is a super common problem with the i20. Basically, the horn stops working. Of course, it's gonna be your airbag clock spring. And just by the way, Anything we do DIY tutorials on, we also sell the product, guys. If you are in Australia, it's free express post. Anywhere in Australia, $83.30 delivered to your door. If you consider that this is a $300 part from Hyundai, you can see the savings that we're all about here at Parts Factory Australia, guys. We teach you how to install it and we save you money on the part as well. And best of all, three year warranty included. So can't go wrong with that. Now. I'm expecting this one to take about 15 minutes. Um, the hardest part will probably be getting the, uh, the horn pad off. Don't forget guys, disconnect your battery. 10 mil, take the negative terminal off, not the positive, the negative one. Turn the key on, let the car drain down, get all the electrical uh, electricity out of the system before operating on this area. After all, they are basically mini explosives. So definitely do that before you get started. Guys, no power tools around the clock spring. Uh, especially rattle gun, that way you do not break or explode prematurely the horn pad. Alrighty guys, I won't waste your time any further, let's jump into it. Alrighty guys, so first things first, we need to get our steering wheel straight, because when we pull this off, uh, we're going to be taking the whole steering wheel off and you don't want to misalign the wheels from the steering wheel, otherwise you'll have to go and get a wheel alignment. So, make sure everything's nice and straight. Now, you need a T40 guys, on the back of these steering wheels, have a look down each side, you're gonna see a little port for a little T40 to go. Basically it holds the horn pad on. Uh, I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera, but I'll have a look. Okay, there it is there. Definitely I can see it, so you guys should be right to find it. Oh, it's already loose. That's why, so mine was already loose guys, so. Let's hope yours is not loose like mine. <laughs> yeah, so loosen it off. Most of the time that bolt stays in that area. Um, so if you find that to be the case, that's okay. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to um, get it out once we get this horn pad off. That, so that side's a bit better, a bit tighter. <laughs> so loosening those bolts right off and then you should be able to Grab your horn pad, give it a wiggle. So that bolt just came out then. So I got the, the left side bolt out. So I may as well give it, give it a go getting the right side out. Remember lefty loosey. Uh, don't want to be going around in circles. So that one's come out too. So put those two bolts on the floor and then grab your horn pad and you can just lift it off nice and gently. Rotate it around. You got this little black plug. Most of the time, I just grab a little Phillips head, give it a bit of a lever, and it'll actually pull the whole plug off. Same thing here, guys. It's best to use like a little flat blade, but I don't have that many resources out in the field. You should be right to just, even the key, basically you just lift that yellow tab and it kind of pops out like that. And then you can pull that horn pad off, just like so. Gently putting it on the dash. And then if you have a look straight into um, this area, you'll see a nice uh, 19 or 21 looking, 21 mil looking nut holds the steering wheel on. So of course you're gonna need a, like a rattle gun or a big bar and crack that 19 or 21 mil. Alrighty guys, so I've got my 19 mil on this um, rattle gun. Now don't take that bolt all the way off because we are gonna to have to do a bit of a forcible removal of this steering wheel, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. So once you've loosened it, then you just put it back on a couple of threads, and grab the steering wheel, left and right, rotation, and it'll pop off like that. And then as you remove the remainder of the steering wheel, just lift it up into the air, unplug your little, um, it's basically just a little flat blade connector, and there you go there, you've exposed your clock spring. So, rest is pretty self-explanatory. You got your Phillips head screws, one, two. Take your key out, 
Uh, putting your Phillips head screw somewhere nice and safe. Pop that up, pop that down, then grab, um, that's coming off. At the top there's a pop, pop it. Same thing here guys, you got a little pop tab, push down, one, and then you got the last one on this side, push down, two, clock spring will pop forward. Now, underneath you got two plugs, you got one just here, we're going to press down, um, let me just have a quick look. Often these plugs are a bit funny. I think they do it on purpose. Uh, let me just, yeah, so this one, you just press down on that white tab and then this clock spring, um, you should be able to rotate it a bit. And then on this yellow one, you just push in on that tab there and that plug should just pop out the back. It kind of just pops off and you can bring your clock spring a little bit further forward. Flip it upside down, now exposing the triple plug. Press down on that white one, and boom. There's your clock spring right there, guys. So, just to go over it again, this one, you just press down on that white tab, nice and uh, firm, and it pops off. This one, you push in on the inside of that plug, see like that? And it allows that tab to come up, and this one is just pretty self-explanatory, guys. All right, guys, so I just wanted to remind you, if you are in need of this part, you wouldn't go and pay 300 bucks from Hyundai. You just grab the parts factory OEM replica, guys. Have a look at that. They are OEM replicas, including a three-year warranty. You bring your new one in, clip it in, bang, plug your three plugs in, and, of course, reassemble. Happy days. You can then clear your airbag code, which is why we're all here, aren't we? All right, so I'm not going to install this good clock spring onto this old scrap car. So I'm gonna remove that. But just before I do get uh, say goodbye to this one, once you've got it reinstalled, I'm gonna mention this later, this is your little locator plug you gotta pull out. Let's pretend this is the one we're installing. Guys, you bring it back in, keeping it all nice and straight. Then you got your plug, you got your yellow one on the right, you got your white one on the very left, and you got your yellow one in the very center. They all just plug in nice and easy. Guys, bring your steering wheel up, get your bolt out of it or your nut rather, tuck the cables through the hole, put your steering wheel back on, making sure everything's nice and straight. Horn pad plug back on in the center. And then of course that last one goes into your horn pad uh, sorry, it goes into, yeah, it actually goes into your actual horn pad, into the center. You just, uh, it does have a male and female locating pin, so you can just go like that, lining them up, pushing down, and then pressing in on that yellow tab. Now, guys, don't forget, we've got to tighten up our um, steering wheel nut. Remember, you've got your airbag. Keep your airbag away from this area when using your rattle gun like so. Now you can bring your airbag back into play. You put your airbag back in position. Guys, I forgot to do my trims, um, but no worries, because you don't technically actually have to have the horn pad off to do them. Bring your trims back up into position, plugging them in nicely like so, and you can access the Phillips heads straight through the side. You guys will probably, if you can, get the opportunity to do it before we get to that point, hopefully. Um, but yeah, not too much of a concern anyway, because you can just do them after. All right, remember your steering will lock once you turn it. So bring your horn pad back into position, clicking it into place. And then of course, you got your two fixating bolts on each side. Tightening them up nicely. Um, what did we have? We had our one of these. I recommend um, if you can use a magnet. That way um, you get them in first time. But yeah, tighten them up nice and firm, guys. But other than that, that is how to replace clock spring on a Hyundai i20.
Alrighty guys, I hope everything's gone nice and smooth with the replacement on your clock spring. You can now go ahead and plug your battery in, 10 mil, nice and tight, and turn your key on. Hopefully your airbags, your airbag lights just done a systems check and it's all cleared, which is what we're looking for, I think. Guys, don't forget, if you did um, want, if you were looking for someone to source that part, we do have it available. You know where to find the link, it's in the title, in the description, click the title, pop down. Get it on its way to you, and then yeah, you can use this video to learn how to fit it. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching another Parts Factory Australia installation tutorial video. My name's Lucas, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.